Um, if you look, oh, this doesn't work. What's up with the mic? It's we just the way you got to hold it. You got to hold it by the bottom. Okay. There you go. Okay. If you look at your uh, programs, it says uh, I'll be speaking from 11 to 11.15. I was told I have 15 minutes, but it's 10 to 11. That gives me 25 minutes. <laughs> He's talking slower already. He's pacing himself. Some of you noticed my vest, my motorcycle vest. I'll talk about it in a few minutes. Kim asked me what do I want to speak about so she can introduce it properly. Obviously, that wasn't conveyed to the MC. I told Kim I want to speak about me. All you. All me. Because I'll speak about me like no one else can, because I can't trust other people to necessarily say nice things, but I will. Which is why I didn't do it. I have a bone to pick with you over your energy thing. Okay. We have to give the government everything we have. Otherwise, how are they going to meet their pensions? Uh, <laughs> that makes me feel bad. How did I overlook that? You know, I, I was first noticed going back to 1995-96 uh, after the... Uh, second Quebec referendum when we almost blew it and I said nobody could have fought a worse battle for Canada than the federal government did so we set up a group called QBAC, QPAC, the Quebec Political Action Committee and we went after every government the provincial government, municipal governments and the federal government more than any of them and people People were under the wrong impression of QPAC. They thought that we were there to fight for national unity. Well, what the hell do I want national unity for in a country where my rights are restricted, where my visibility is eliminated, where my language is second class? Why do I want to live in a country like that? Well, we're faced with this again, but this is not the focus of my speech, but I figure I'll throw it in. There's a referendum coming. I hope there's a referendum coming. And I hope that there are 100,000 Canadians who rush to Montreal a week before the referendum with signs that say, get out. Yes. <laughs> Anyone who thinks that Canada needs Quebec is delusional. It is the other way around. And if you want to have linguistic freedom, linguistic rights, linguistic equality in the rest of Canada, Quebec has got to go because Canada is not a bilingual nation. You should know that. Less than 3% of the Canadian population, excluding the population of Quebec, are French speakers. And of that less than 3%, probably 99% are fluently bilingual. So why do we have to penalize and punish people who can't pass a proficiency exam to work in a hospital where 90% of the people are English anyways and the other 10% can speak English. <clears throat> Let me get back to me. <laughs> this is my motorcycle vest. I turned 64 recently. I had no idea what I was going to do with the meager left of my life. Like 64 is old. Yep. I remember when my parents turned 64, I figured I... <laughs> so, I got a motorcycle. I almost killed myself taking it out of the parking lot. My wife is a witness. Four times. And I, I, f I found a group of bikers, actually they found me from Montreal, who have this ride called the R2Rs, the ride to remember. And the ride is about the Holocaust and it's about remembering the Holocaust and raising money so that we can send non-Jewish educators to teach their students about the Holocaust. Now let me tell you something very quickly about the Holocaust. Six million Jews died but six million non-Jews died in the death camps as well. 12 million people were murdered 
because one group of fascists didn't agree with them. Not necessarily just their religion, but their political philosophy as well. They didn't like homosexuals. They didn't like people who were physically disabled. They didn't like people who tended to want to unionize. So it was much easier just to wipe them all out, including the mentally disabled, than to try to accommodate and find common ground. The world has not changed. Not even a little bit. We can sit here and have a great buffet breakfast and think, yeah, the world has changed, it's better now. We have communications all over the world, the internet opens doors that we could never have dreamt of. But look what's happening in Syria. Look what's happening in Ukraine. Look what's happening all over the world. I assure you, the world has not changed. So I went on this motorcycle ride all the way to Skokie, Illinois. Now, Skokie is famous because I saw that. I got 20 minutes. You're doing fine. So. That was a two minute pause. So. I got on my bike, which was too small for what I was going to do. I had no riding experience to speak of, and I left our home in Williamstown, met this group out of Montreal, and we, we rode to Skokie. It's a thousand mile ride. These guys are on Harley Davidson's BMW bikes, and I've got this little 750 Honda <laughs> trying to keep up with them. I was pathetic. I begged them to go ahead without me. <laughs> I snuck out and I came back by myself because I was too embarrassed to ride with them. And, but it was an eye-opener for me. I went to Skokie and I met about three or four hundred people from a group called the JMA, which is the Jewish Motorcycle Alliance. And these are bikers from all over the world. And I thought that was, you know, I never heard of this, Jewish motorcycle guys. Accountants, doctors, pharmacists, business guys, bikers? I came home and I told Anna, I said, what a great trip, what a shitty motorcycle. <laughs> it was brand new. Anna says, get rid of it. I said, Ann, I'm going to lose a ton. She said, what's the point of having something you don't enjoy that's supposed to be a toy? You shouldn't have to say that twice. <laughs> so now I have a much larger motorcycle, a Honda 1300 VTX. The bikers, you'll appreciate what it is. The non-bikers, be impressed. <laughs> so I can keep up with the big guys now. A couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, they're going to have this R2R in Toronto. So they asked me if I would promote it. That's what I do. I wasn't interested in going to a banquet and having a whole bunch of people who were really all self minded people who believed in the same thing, what's the point of doing that? I don't need to get together for a, a, a gab fest, a gab enough. I went to Ottawa, I rented a reserved Parliament Hill, I contacted a Christian group called the M25 Bikers, and I invited them to participate with us. Within a very short period of time, not only did we have all of Parliament Hill, we also had uh, cabinet ministers who were attending, a lot of MPs who attended, a lot of other people who attended. We had bikers come in from Australia, England, Israel, and from all over the states. So my newfound friends, this group of Christian bikers show up, and it looks like, like the Hell's Angels just came to town. <laughs> The Jewish guys were scared. I mean, these guys here were the real deal. What's that bike show on TV that's really popular? It's Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. I was with them. If you were walking down the street and you saw a couple of these guys, you'd cross the street and wish you were in a different city. They're all born again. I never understood the meaning of born again until... Recently, and that's not a joke, that's true. 
These guys, if they didn't find religion, if they didn't find God, if they didn't find Christ, they wouldn't be alive. Or they'd be in prison somewhere, rotting for the rest of their lives. These were the worst of the worst, who became the best of the best. Now, I am extremely proud to say that they've also become some of my best friends. Wow. They consider me to be one of the best Jewish Christians they ever met. <laughs> Let me tell you something else about these guys, and women, by the way. They're all really conservative. When they became born again, they understood that there's a price to be paid for being born again, and that's to have conservative values. They don't do anything in excess, except ride hard. But I got a big enough bike to keep up with them. They don't know how scared I am, but... <laughs> so we had this massive display on Parliament Hill, a couple of years ago, it was incredibly successful. Then we went off to, we went off to Toronto, or some of them did. The Christian guys, myself, and a few other Jewish bikers, went to CFB Trenton, where my group, where I actually financed a large event for our fallen soldiers at the air base. And there's this tremendous monument that was built there. We helped donate money to it. The Christian guys, I couldn't believe, it's not their fight. They're from Texas and God knows where else. They were very generous with their money to help our Canadian veterans. We had a color guard there. We had a rabbi who actually chanted the Kaddish, which is the Hebrew prayer for the dead. Our flags were flying high. The Canadian flag, the American flag, and the Israeli flag. And it was an incredibly touching moment by everyone. One of the bishops of this motorcycle group came to us and he said, he came in from Vancouver for this, and he said, would you guys be willing to do this again? We have this massive gathering in Dallas, Texas next year, and we'd like you to be there. Well, of course I said yes, not figuring...